Welcome back. This is now part B of the Easy Affinity Designer Basics. Affinity Designer is a vector drawing application. In other words, you cannot take the bucket tool and then go ahead and make your color like you can in pixel-based software. That is because the convenience of vector drawing is to go back and change the color, line thickness, or editing without having to redraw everything over. So if I want to change this girl's hair, I'll just click on the hair and change it to yellow instead. In any vector drawing application, you will need to work with both a stroke and fill separately. This is your stroke and this is your fill. And whatever is on top indicates which one is currently selected. If you do not see the stroke and fill here on your interface, then it is because you only have one column of tools available. And if that's the case, then you would have to refer to over here in the Color or Swatches Studio. The stroke is like your line art. You can change your size up here, and then you can change it over here in the Stroke Studio. And you'll notice that once you draw something, you can change the stroke size afterward as well because this is vector. You can even go back to um, another path you already drew with this tool, the move tool, and then change your size, make dashed line, change into a brush stroke, and change it back to a regular line. And now while this path is selected, I'm gonna go to the fill and select a color. Now notice how the color is already applied. With vector drawing, you need to draw what is in you need to draw in closed paths. So in other words, the starting point and ending point must connect. And then you can go in and add your color. When you are making your drawings, it is okay to make some open curves. If I hold alt and click on the stack order here, and uh, keep pressing, you'll see that this part is a closed path, the main is a closed path, but these lines here are open paths because these are the line indications. So it's okay to have um, some open paths as long as you know what you're going to edit later on. And down here in the lion's body, we have the belly and then um, the body. For the belly, rather than to have um, two pa two closed paths with the edges um, right next to each other. The belly here is clipped inside the body and that would really help in cases in which you want to have two paths edged right together. With the move tool you can you can select objects, you can move them, you can stretch them, resize, and you can also screw objects. And then with a node tool, you can edit your points. You see these um, points here? These are nodes. So you can use the node tool and click a node and then edit them. And you can add new nodes by just clicking somewhere on the line. And then that becomes a new node. And then these here are handles. Just click and drag them. Or you can also click the line itself and drag them. And then when you select the node tool, you have other actions up here. You can convert your line, but it depends on where you have, um, what nodes you have selected. And while you select, while your line is selected and you have a node selected, you can create a bounding box with the node tool. And then you can uh, change the nodes all together. In the transform studio, you can rotate nodes. And something that I want to show you are these options up here, which really become useful. This is the break curve command. So if you click a node and then say break curves, then you just made a split. So if I were to close this, it just closes this shape. And remember I said you need to make everything in closed paths. Now I'm going to draw something else. I'm going to draw another line here and I want to close 
I want to join these two paths. Now, if I were to have both of these selected, hold shift to select multiple objects, I wouldn't be able to join this part here. Once I join the paths, this part is what joins because these two endpoints were closer together than these two endpoints. In other words, if I were to do this, See how I am not actually continuing the path? These are all individually, these are all individual paths. But if I have all these selected and then click the node tool, I can join them this way. Now all this is one curve. Right here we have multiple shapes. And if I select one of these shapes, like the star tool, for example, you'll notice that I cannot take the node tool and then edit the shape the same way as I could with actual curves. But once you are satisfied with the look of your shape, then you click this button, convert to curves. Now you can edit the shape as you could with actual curves. Now I'm gonna create a path, and this is currently a stroke, and now I wanna convert this to a fill. So what I am gonna do for that is, I'm gonna go to layer, and expand stroke. Now it is a fill. And if I take the no tool, see I edit this the shape as I would a fill. If you want to change your document size, then while the move tool is selected, you can click here where it says document setup and do it this way. Or you can use the artboard tool and then you have manual control over your document um, size. And then once you're happy with the size, press the delete key, say keep objects, and then you're working with that new size. This is the round corner tool. So if I create a bounding box around corners, then you can create round corners this way or individually. And then you can change the look of your corner like straight edges or what. This is your pen tool. This is very important in any vector drawing application. And then I'm right now I'm under pen mode. So you click and drag and uh, continue your path. If you hold alt and then click the previous point, then you strain out the next curve. And then you have different modes up here like the smart mode. This is the pencil tool. This is the tool I use quite a lot. And this is your brush tool. It looks the same as the pencil tool, but then under here in the brushes studio, you have various brushes. And then you can select a brush and then change it to another. This is the gradient tool. So if you select an object, just click and drag and you uh, easily make a gradient and then you can add a new node just by clicking and then you can add lightness um, with that new node and if you come from Illustrator and you want to be more precise then click here and then you can choose you can cho choose the midpoint opacity and everything as you would through Illustrator's gradient window this is um, the this is the transparency tool. So if I with this object selected, I can create a transparent effect. And this is surprisingly not in Illustrator. It's in InDesign, but not Illustrator. And this is the crop tool. This is for cropping vector objects. It is not for cropping the document itself, as um, programs like Photoshop or Affinity Photo would do. And this is the text tool. I'm going to go over this later. And then this is the color picker tool. This um, copies the section of the color. It doesn't actually copy the properties. But once you do select a color, click and hold this eyedropper tool and drag it. Then that color will stay in this section of your color studio. So if I were to change this to red or orange or whatever, just click on this saying that it was previously used. And then my, col 
the color would change back to that. Now say I did have a gradient and then I want to apply it here but I have another color. I'm gonna copy this and then with this selected, I'm going to click Paste Style. And you can also paste effects. You have multiple effects right down here at the bottom of your Layer Studio. And you also have various adjustments you can add, which is a lot like photo editing. And I'm going to be getting into masking later. You can even zoom in over a million percent. When you select the text tool, by default you have the Autistic Text Tool. You start off by resizing and then you can start typing. And then after you can resize it again. This is the Autistic Text Tool. And you realize that it works differently from Illustrator, whereas resizing it would just resize the frame and not the text itself. So if you click the, on this arrow, then you go to the Frame Text Tool and then you create the box and then you create the text individually and notice how this is a lot smaller I can change it by ch changing the text through here or click on this dot down here and change the text that way you can also type on a path with the autistic text tool so have your cursor until you see that line and then stop typing and you can also, you also have options in here in the character and paragraph panel. And you have basic um, letting, tracking, and kerning. And here you can change um, the tracking. But something you can also do is put your cursor here and then just spin the wheel on your mouse. Also, if you create a shape, then you can convert it into a text box. Just go to layer, convert to text frame. A mask is like a window for layers. There are two types of masks. There is a vector mask and there is a pixel mask. When you create a vector mask, it is a lot like the crop tool, only you have more control over it. So once you create your shape, you can click and drag it beside the layer to create the mask. And then if you zoom in, you will see that the edges are still vector. Whereas with the pixel mask, you can open up the pixel persona and use the eraser tool and you still create a mask. However, the edges are now pixelated and you can remove masks by clicking on the mask thumbnail and then click delete. I'm going to create a mask on this character right here, which is all vector. So I can either select a part on him or select the layer overall. And then I can click this icon to create a mask. Or I can go into the pixel persona and start erasing that will automatically create the mask. So if I select an object, you see that is the erased region is not actually split apart. And again, you just click on the mask thumbnail and press delete, and then it comes back. Or when you have um, the brush tool selected, while black is um, up, you can erase, and while white is up, then you can bring back what you lost. You can also clip pixel objects inside vector objects. So, so this is the layer I want to clip a pixel object into. So I'm going to create a new pixel layer and I'm going to nest this inside this layer. And now with a pixel layer selected, I'm going to select the brush tool, choose a brush, and I'm going to just Start brushing. And that covers the basics. I hope this was helpful. If you have more questions, I have a link in the description to the official online help. Have a good day.